So welcome to the paperless office, uh, which I call the dream. <clears throat> so the first question anyone wants to ask is why go paperless? I mean, you know, what I've got doesn't broke, so why fix it? So here are some reasons I think you should go paperless. One, you know, no more losing loose bits of paper. Uh, having everything in one place. And you can have paper in one place, but what about audio files, web clippings, or pictures that were emailed to you? Um, going paperless allows you to put all of that in one place. You're able to share information with your team and with clients in a much more efficient and easy way. Um, less steps uh, and more efficient. What I mean by that is a lot of the stuff you're getting is via email as attachments. So, you know, no more printing that out and then stuffing it into your file folder. Um, <clears throat> you can save different media. I save audio notes, I save pictures, I save web clippings, I save uh, just an amazing uh, keynote presentations. I just save an amazing amount of stuff. Um, and it's all able to do that when it's paperless. A lot of the stuff you can't print. You can't print an audio recording. There's less weight to lug. I don't know about you, but I've thrown my shoulder out once or twice with a really heavy briefcase. Um, you know, now everything sits in my iPad or at, at, at best my laptop, so a lot less weight. Um, organization is, in my opinion, much easier when it's paperless. Um, you can shuffle and reshuffle things very easily. Finding stuff. How many times have you saved a piece of paper and had no idea where it was, was unable to find it, and then had to recreate things? Uh, when we go paperless, it is just a lot easier to find what it is that you found, what it is you saved. And it's always accessible <clears throat> because the things I'll be talking about are uh, in what we call in the cloud, which means that it's up in a server somewhere and you access the information through the internet. So wherever you are, whatever device you use. So I think there's three stages of uh, dealing with paper. The first stage is kind of obvious. It's the inbox where you either create a piece of paper or you receive it. Um, <clears throat> there is processing it where you need to store it properly or get signatures. And then the last part is the outbox where you distribute things to the people that need them. So let's talk about the inbox first. Let's talk about creation. Um, these are the types of things that I think um, come in on a daily basis in my business. There's probably more than this that comes in, but it's kind of endless how much stuff you can actually get into that inbox. Um, and it just overwhelms you. So let's talk about processing the stuff in your inbox. So the first part and probably the most important is storage. Where do you store it and how does it get organized? Um, Dropbox is one way that you store things. I find that Dropbox is best for pieces of paper that are going to need to go someplace. Uh, things that you're going to need to process for storage, uh, for signature, uh, things that you'll need to share with people. I, I use Dropbox. So think of that as your <clears throat> manila file folder that holds your traditional pieces of paper that you're going to need to share with people. Evernote is a cloud service that handles that plus everything else. And then there are things such as Google Docs, which also handles pieces of paper, and Box.net. And then there's your email program, which is a huge storage thing. Don't, don't discount that. That's an amazing storage place for information. So let's talk about Dropbox first because uh, it's, I think, an important part of my business. So Dropbox is like your My Documents folder, but it lives on the cloud, which means you can access it through the internet. So um, all of you, either PC or um, Macintosh, you, you all have a document folder. It is the place where you save the Word documents that you created, the Excel spreadsheets. If you got a PDF in an email and you save that PDF, you saved it to your My Documents folder. So now we're going to create another folder called Dropbox. And it functions exactly the same way as your My Documents folder. It's also shareable. You can share it with team members, with clients. It lives on your computer. And it also lives on the cloud at the same time. Now here's what's important about that. If you're at your computer and you create a Word document, uh, you know, memo to self, and you save it into your Dropbox folder, <clears throat> automatically your computer sends that version of the document, my, my, what did I call it, my document to myself, and it sends it up to the cloud, okay, 
and then it simultaneously sends it down to any other computer that you've installed Dropbox on. So here's how that works. You've got a computer at, at your office and you've got a computer at home and then you've got the cloud. Think of the cloud up here. So you created a document over in your office, you dropped it into your Dropbox folder, Dropbox automatically sends it up to the cloud and then automatically sends it down to your desktop computer. So when you go home, you're going to have that exact same document on your home computer. Also works if you have Dropbox on your iPad or on your iPhone. All of those devices will have the exact same document, okay? And anyone who shares the exact same document um, has exact same time. So I share my folders with my assistant, and as soon as I upload something to Dropbox, my assistant has the exact same document at the exact same time, okay? So <clears throat> how does Dropbox work? Uh, it's really, it's so simple that people often say it's got to be more complicated than this, but, but it really isn't. It is save your file to your Dropbox folder. Um, you can have folders inside of folders. I'm kind of a freak this way. I like to have everything organized in its own proper folder inside of a, a, a main folder. And then you can invite your assistant to share that folder with you. Or if you have more than one team member shared, and, and, and that's, and that really is it. It's that simple. Okay, so Evernote. Um, Evernote is something more than Dropbox. Dropbox is really kind of a repository for traditional representations of paper. Evernote handles that, but it also handles a whole lot more. So let's kind of get into that. For me, I call it the total repository of life's effluvia. And what I mean by that is that Evernote captures everything that's going on in my life. I can write notes to myself. I can speak into my iPhone and that creates an audio note. I can snap a picture of a detail in a house, something to note for inspection, uh, a, a house that I'd love to list someday. I can snap pictures. Um, all of all of the things that are interesting to me. I can record my to-dos. I can journal in, in Evernote. All of that can go in there. I can also clip web pages. So I'm searching on the internet. Uh, easy example, you got MLS. You see a house that you want to share with your buyer. And so you do that through the MLS because that's easy. But you also want to keep a copy of what you've sent to your buyer. And we all know the MLS is sometimes a bit difficult to get in, you know, what have you. You can just save that to Evernote tagged with the buyer's name and it's and it's right there. And then, you know, let's just say that it's uh, uh, the buyer has something they need to sell and you look up their tax data of the house that they want and you want to save that to Evernote. So you do that and you tag it with that same client's name. And then you go to uh, Google Maps and you want to see where that property is on the map. And and Google gives you a nice little picture, so you clip that and save that to Evernote. Now you got a little map of where the house is, and it's all in Evernote, and it's all tagged with your client's name, so you can easily find it later on. Um, it's just an amazing way to get web information, save it so that you always have it. You don't have to remember what website you went to to get to it, okay? And then you can capture important emails. Now, we've already talked about Gmail or your whatever email program you're using as a good storage container, but there's always that key email that comes from your client, the one that where he says, I was wrong and I should have listened to you. Um, and you want to save that email for posterity and legal protection, so you make sure that you capture that in Evernote, tagged with the client's name, and it's always going to be there. Even if your Gmail account gets closed, you've got a copy of it in Evernote, so don't print it out on paper. Save it to Evernote, okay? <clears throat> so other containers that we can use besides Dropbox and Evernote, which are the two that I use every day. Uh, Google Docs is another way to save uh, traditional pieces of paper. Uh, Google Docs is really great for having collaborative documents. Those of you who are in our accountabilities groups, you know we're using Google Docs to create this shared spreadsheet. It's really good for that type of thing. <clears throat> Box.net is a similar kind of document storage thing. Both of them are free. Everything I talk about actually is free. Um, so this is an alternative to Dropbox. Uh, Gmail is another container. Uh, we shouldn't discount that. Um, a lot of you might be using Outlook. Same idea. Your email is a container of information and you can use your email to save not only the emails that you receive, but you can send emails to yourself. 
to save thoughts and ideas. Um, you know, here's an idea. I know of a service where you can email yourself to remind yourself of when uh, uh, an event is going to happen. And uh, it's just it's amazing what you can do. Um, and you can use labels, folders to archive messages to have them organized so that you can find them when you need to. So the process, uh, we also have to process for signatures. So this one actually is kind of simple, but you know, basically you need to save a document as a PDF. Then you need to open that up in DocuSign and you need to send it for signature. This is not a DocuSign class. So I'm not going to get into exactly how you use DocuSign, um, but having that PDF saved in Evernote or in Google Docs or in Dropbox is part of getting it process for signature. Okay. So Outbox, now that you've processed it, how do you get it back out? You need to know how to send atta attachments to your email. Uh, you can also send notes that you've created in Evernote or saved in Evernote. You can send those straight from Evernote out to whomever needs to get that information. Or you can share documents that are on Dropbox. And you can even share entire folders on Dropbox. So here's an idea. You've got a home inspection, which is 57 pages long. It has pictures. It is a huge whopping file. And if you tried to email this to a prospective buyer, it'll crash the email service. So what you do, since you saved it to Dropbox, because that's where all your paper is, you can actually just say, you can actually just share that home inspection report as a link. You can get a link and you put that link into your email and boom, they, it, is, it goes, obviously it's nothing but some text and, your, and the prospective client gets it, they click on the link and boom, they can see the whole home inspection report, download it to their own computer, easy squeezy, lemon peasy, okay? So why wouldn't you use a paperless system? I mean, let's just go ahead and call a spade a spade. Some of you are gonna be very uncomfortable with the idea of letting go of your closely held bits of paper that you hug to your chest like your basic security blanket. Um, and one is that you're insecure. You're feeling like maybe it isn't all there. You're feeling like if I can't see it, taste it, touch it, smell it, it doesn't exist. Um, you know, I can understand how you feel and I just refer you to the beginning of the presentation. Why go paperless? If you feel the need for security outweighs the benefits of going paperless, then by all means, continue with the huge folders. Um, your fear of loss. This is a really significant fear and a very reasonable one. Um, computers crash, servers crash, things happen. Um, how do you know that your stuff is still gonna be there? Uh, I will point out that stuff happens to paper too. You could leave your blue folder that has all the sections closely with all your deal transactions. You could leave that on the floor of McDonald's while you're munching on a large serving of super, a super serving of fries. So it's kind of the same thing, but it, I understand. Here's the thing. Whereas if you have one paper folder file of your documents, in all probability, that is the only copy that exists. And if something happens to that file folder, you're SOL. There's no other way to put it. However, with computers, there's a lot of backups. Here's something called um, Carbonite dot com. It's an automatic backup system for your entire computer's hard drive. So the entire contents of your computer are automatically uploaded to a service, to a server that's in, I don't know, Pocuxia, Iowa. I don't know where it is, but it's in some other place that doesn't have earthquakes, presumably. Um, and if your computer does crash and your hard drive gets wiped by an evil virus, Carbonite.com can restore that to your computer from the last time it backed up. And since it's automatic, it, the last backup was probably yesterday or maybe just an hour ago. Um, with Evernote, you have multiple copies all over the place. It's in the cloud, it's in different computers that you've installed Evernote. Same thing with Dropbox. If you have Dropbox installed, it's not only in your home computer and in the cloud, but it's also in your assistant's computer and your desktop computer. It's in a lot of different places. So yes, things can happen. We can lose the documents. But if you're paperless, the chances that there is a copy that you can retrieve are much greater than if your file folder gets dumped in the pool by your toddler.
Okay, so that is pretty much my presentation. This is a list of resources to all of the things that I mentioned. Um, feel free to download any or all of those. The only thing that costs money um, is Carbonite. That is, I believe, $100 a computer per year. Maybe it's $60. It's, it's really inexpensive for the, for the insurance. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.